I'm afraid I'm getting on my high horse today, ladies and gentlemen. I am getting on my high horse. Uh, thanks very much to the correspondent who sent me the bit of information which I'm going to impart to you today. But this is not a unique situation. It's been going on for weeks and weeks and weeks. Uh, and it's affecting lots of different businesses and it's affecting people and how they live. So let's get to the crux of what this is about and then I'll expand a little bit further on it. So here we go. I was sent um, a planning application. Let's just have a quick look at this. This is a specific one, close-ish to where I live. Um, and, and here it is. This is um, a planning application um, to build homes, 180 homes on land east of Battle Road near Hailsham, I think it is. And uh, as you can see, what is being proposed, essentially Hook and Son will lose 40 acres. Now, Hook and Son is a farm and you'll see who they, what they do. Um, they are tenant uh, farmers, I believe. They will lose, because the landlord is selling the land, will lose 40 acres of grazing land that they rent from the landowner. This is the best land on the farm. Uh, without this land, herd size will be reduced and the business will no longer be viable. The essential thing is here is that they will have to give up milking cows that produce raw milk. Uh, now, this isn't, uh, this isn't one of these health things to say, oh, well, raw, raw milk is better than homogenized or pasteurized milk, although that is probably true, um, it, it, depending on the cleanliness and the practice of getting the raw milk. And I'm not, we're not arguing that in this case. It's about how this is just a, a land is going to be sold by the landlord um, and 180 houses are going to be built on prime farmland. And this is where I get... This is where I get a bit upset because, to me, farmland should be sacrosanct. To me, farmland isn't just for the current farmer to sell off to prospective builders, to uh, builders to create houses on. Farmland is there to supply uh, food. It's there to give somebody a business to grow food or to have uh, cattle perhaps grazing animals whatever it might be whatever the land is suitable for if it's been in farmland for generations then what you're doing by selling that land and this is where i get annoyed is you are in the future future people will be inhibited by able to use that land to feed themselves in the future and by uh, even being having allowance, I mean, it should be a rule. In my book, it would be a rule that nowadays, uh, particularly in the last, say, 100 years, since uh, the turn of the last century, I would, have, I would have made it. But certainly since the war, the Second World War, I, would have, I personally would have said it is now illegal, um, unlawful even, to build on private land. Uh, to, sorry, to build on farmland, because you are depriving future farmers from farming. You are depriving future generations from having locally produced food. Now, you may go in the countryside, you may drive around and look about and go, oh, look, there's lots of land. It doesn't matter, does it? We all need homes. And I know the argument is we all need homes. We've all got to have, have houses. We've all got to live in these things. And, and I live in a Victorian house. And, and the argument has been made, oh, but before you moved there, it was farmland. Well, that's very true. And at that point, in uh, when, when my house was built in 1878 or 1875, the house I'm living in now. And when that was built, when that was constructed, the population was much short, smaller. There were fewer people, and so you could afford uh, to build on a bit more land, farmland, and and increase, as, as indeed the Victorians did. But these days, I don't think you can do that now, because land is a premium, people need a bit of land, and more importantly than ever, we need to be growing more food and being self-sufficient. We saw during the First and the Second World War how how much food was being brought in two thirds of the food that we ate during the second world war was coming in on convoy ships and of course because it was wartime these ships 
were being targeted by the enemy. The German Nazis were targeting the warships. They were blowing them up with their submarines, trying to effectively starve us in this country. And so what happened is that we grew, we had the dig for victory, we grew our own food and allotments, private gardens, anywhere was um, turned into the basically places to grow food. And so it was that we were growing as much food as we could. Food, of course, had been rationed. We don't want to see that coming down the line, what with the attack on farmers at the moment, in which case food is going to be rationed, that we'll all be eating artificial food and we won't be able to eat proper food. And it doesn't help if we start building on prime land, on prime farmland. This is just a nonsense. I know people have got to have houses and stuff, but it should be, in my book, completely unlawful to build on farmland, especially especially if that land is in farm use. I can understand if it's been abandoned for 10 years, 20 years, it's just sitting there doing nothing. I can understand that people are struggling, but we need land. People are looking for land. People want to go back to the land. More people are realising that actually the food we eat in the supermarkets is not as nutrient rich. It doesn't have the minerals or the vitamins that is needed to sustain life, which is why so many people are getting ill and they're having to resort to seeing GPs, going to doctors. Their natural immunity is not as strong as it should be because they're eating substandard food. We know that highly processed food doesn't give it to us. We know it's convenient But ultimately, we can see more and more people are getting ill. More and more people have these mysterious mental health issues that they never had before. All these different physical issues that they're going to the doctors about that we never had before. And it doesn't seem that Big Pharma are necessarily the answers. The answer is that food in and of itself is medicine. Only the quality of the food has got to be good. If it's not good, it's not doing us any good. So this is why we need the farmland and growing, such as in this instance, is um, just a a non-starter in my my book. So I just want to have a look at reasons um, why farmland like this should not be. I mean, I've given you my personal reasons, but here we are. Look, look, here's some personal, more reasons. Uh, um, Let's see if I can get to them um, on this document, which is... um, Just down here, 40 acres of grazing land is integral to the farm's viability. Farms should not be fragmented, it says. Farmland producing food for local people should not be fragmented uh, and lost, but protected from development. That's exactly what I would say. How would the statutory biodiversity gain be achieved on existing organic farmland with the biodiversity that is already that it already provides the food that the farm produces is important for different reasons raw milk yogurt butter and organic they're just uh, some of the reasons um i can't seem to for some reason get all of this oh, hang on i just need to reduce this down and do a little let's just try it here see if i can get the rest of the arguments up on the screen so that you can see them just bear with me there caller here we go um let's see if we can get these up uh, let me just do that there we go there we are that's a bit better isn't it um what else have we got on here hook and son is the main raw producer in the uk hook and son employ 20 full-time staff six part-time people those with jobs at stake it says here it is the last dairy farm in hailsham hook and son organically farms land on pevensey levels site of special scientific interest which is an ssi Hook and Sons Farm is and an award-winning farm for its produce and featured in the film The Moo Man, which was showcased by the United Nations in 2014 and in the UN uh, Year of the Family Farm, as well as featuring at the 2013 Sundance Film Festival. OK, so you might argue that, that being in films doesn't necessarily mean anything, except that it was the UN, the United Nations, etc. Um, but there we go, the last... Uh, farm in Hailsham, which is sacrilege, and the fact that it is um, the main UK raw milk provider. Now, you may disagree with raw milk, 
But my arguments, I say, still stand that farmland, good quality farmland, is not just for the now. It's not just for Hook and Son. It's for their descendants and people who buy the farm after them and people beyond. It's your children, your children's children and their children's children should have the right to grow food on fertile land wherever it is, up and down the countryside. And so although this is about Hook and Son in, in this particular example, I would say that this is a much broader, much more important. It's across the world. We are taking farms out of the farming uh, industry. It's not really an industry. It should be a way of life. And we are bunging down concrete and bricks and steel and glass, and we are preventing the most important thing that we can do is grow fruit, food for us and our community and good quality food at that. We must not take this land out of it. And if you know any development that's going up, I would definitely say get involved, help and support these people. We can work out different ways of housing. That's all possible. But these cutty-cooker type of houses, which resemble to me more like uh, a prison camp, from the Second World War, um, that all the same, t you know, two or three alternative style houses, all very similar, all going up very quickly, not going to last very long. I mean, the only good thing about all of this is those houses are most likely to fall to bits in the next 50 years and people will have to vacate and maybe that land would go back to farming. But let's not even get there in the first place. That would be my argument. So sorry about getting on the high horse and thanks so much to my correspondent for that one. But I just think this is an, an, a, a terrible thing. And lastly, lastly, why are we building so many houses? Maybe if we, the government turned around and put their foot down on those people coming to our shores in rubber dinghies who all need to be housed, we wouldn't need perhaps so many houses and so much... A, a decimation to our countryside, a beloved countryside. Perhaps we wouldn't need that. So uh, that would be another of my arguments.